Hey there guys, I just wanted to quickly run over power supplies, it's probably quite a short video. Um, I often see quite a few people sort of suggesting their new gaming builds and they've invested in a really cheap power supply. And this isn't necessarily because they don't know what they're doing. A lot of people don't know what is a good power supply and what is a bad power supply. And I just quickly wanted to run over that. Basically, you all probably would have noticed you can get a 500 watt power supply for 60 quid or you can get a 700 watt power supply for 20 quid and this doesn't really make sense to a lot of people because they don't understand the ratings on the power supplies. Um, basically if you've got a really low end computer you're not having a graphics card in it you're just going to use it for general word processing and internet explorer you're probably never going to actually be even maxing out the processor in terms of power consumption, consumption. so you can afford to invest in a really cheap sort of 400 watt one without much worry. However, if you're going to put a graphics card in your computer or you're going to have any kind of gaming build um, or higher end build, so for video editing and stuff, you really need to uh, invest in the sort of higher end power supplies. Um, and the difference between these and lower end power supplies is their ratings that I'll get onto in a sec. Basically, the wattage of a power supply is the amount of power is it can turn the voltage from the wall into. That wattage, that number of watts, sorry, does not necessarily get to your computer. It, uh, some of it is released as heat, some as sound. Now, because of this, um, a, testing cert a testing type and certification was brought in to allow people to see what power supplies are actually any good. Um, and this sort of certification system is called the 80 plus certification. Uh, if there's a number of them that I'll run through in a minute, but basically it was designed to show people the percentage of watts that are getting to their PC. If a power supply doesn't have a certification of this kind, it means less than 80% of the power of the wattage stated is getting to your computer. So, um, and if they haven't gone through the effort to go for the 80 plus certification, um, that's the only official certification by the way, I've seen a couple of sites use a 70 plus certification, this does not exist, um, so be very wary of that. Uh, if it doesn't have an 80 plus certification and they haven't gone through the effort to get that, chances are it's actually lower than 70, it's probably more like 65 to 60%. This means if you're getting a 500 watt power supply without a certification, you're actually probably only 350 watts or so is reaching your computer, um, and you can see very quickly how this becomes quite a big deal and as you go up um, in watts you lose more power because the percentage so 700 watt I think you're looking at more like 400 watts 450 watts um, and this is where these 80 plus certifications come in so from sort of good retailers like Corsair, XFX, um, I think OCZ has them, I think some firm will take ones have them uh, they all have these 80 plus certifications and this is basically a guarantee that of how much power is going to get to your PC. So for an 80 plus certification uh, you're literally just getting 80, at max load you're getting 80% of the watts um, to your PC. For an 80 plus bronze you're getting up to 85%, uh, between 81 and 85%. For 80 plus silver, you're getting between 89% and 85%. 80 plus gold, you're getting between 92 and 88%. 80 plus platinum, you're getting between 94 and 91%. And 80 plus titanium, you're getting between 96 and 91%. Uh, these are best case scenarios, of course. Every single power supply will change slightly uh, because no two components are exactly the same, especially on that fabrication level. Um, the currently the best to go for is the 80 plus bronze this gives the sort of the best balance between performance and price and you'll see most corsair most sort of um gaming corsair power supplies or xfx power supplies will all be 80 plus bronze personally i recommend corsair or xfx they tend to be the two best to, uh, for power supplies I myself have an XFX 650 watt Pro Series power supply and can't fault it, it's got an 80 plus bronze certification. Also the Corsair Builder Series are incredibly good and it actually works well because the XFX go up in increments of 550 watts, um, 
650 watts, 750 watts, 850 watts, whereas the Corsair goes 500, 600, 700, 800. So depending on the power you need, you can swap between them as they're basically the same power supply, um, just at different wattage. Uh, just to go over another thing, a lot of people I see sort of having sort of quite mid-end builds. So you're looking at XFX 3570K, um, an NVIDIA 650. I mean, I'm not saying this is a bad build, this will max out most games. But in terms of a power supply, you can probably run this off a 550 watt power supply, maybe even a 500 watt if it's a good, really good quality one. Uh, so don't go and splash out on the best power supply, it's not necessary, you don't need to spend that extra money. Uh, most of the time you can get away with 600 watts for almost anything. A 670 will run quite happily off my power supply, the XFX 650 Pro Series. Um, and yeah, so don't think you need you need that 1000 watt power supply as some people seem to think. Um, one, it doesn't necessarily, you're not going to be using it. And two, because the ratings are in percentage, you're losing more power. So if that 1000 watt power supply is an 80 plus certification, it's actually only giving 80% of that, so 800 watts to your computer. Um, so you're losing more because it's a percentage, not a fixed sum or fixed figure. Um, the next thing I wanted to move on to was the rails. Um, to save money, um, I'll just quickly say that I don't know everything there is to know about the rails. I haven't got an engineering degree. Um, when I went to buy my power supply, I spent hours of research trying to figure out what it was and this is what I got from it. Basically, 12 volt rails is the main rail, the main rail that will supply wattage to your computer. What this means is that a lot of components use 12 volts. You have 3.3 volts, 5 volts, um, I think there's another one, and then 12 volts. 12 volts uh, tends to have the most wattage given to that rail, and it runs the things like your processor, your graphics card, they all run off the 12 volt rail. Now. Some power supplies, slightly cheaper power supplies, um, use slightly cheaper components and to sort of stop them burning out or stop the um, voltage sort of overloading them, they split the 12 volt rail into some smaller rails, each with its own wattage supply. Um, this means you're actually getting, you're probably getting the right amount of power to your components, but if you're going to overclock or if there's a sudden for some reason the graphics card just wants to draw a couple more watts than is allowed by the rail. Um, this will cause a shutdown, uh, overclocking will draw more power and the power supply will probably burn out quicker. Um, however, the, the Corsair Builder Series and the XFX Pro Series both have single 12 volt rails. This means that the wattage is just split between everything. There's no, um, this, yeah, there's just one lump sum of wa uh, wattage that can be fed down the rails. Um, there's not a fixed amount of wattage that is given to each rail. So I think my power supply has something like 486 watts given to the 12 volt rail, and that can be drawn by anything. So this means if the CPU suddenly like surges a little bit, um, the power supply and the my motherboard will stop it surging too much and cause an auto shutdown. But if it's just a few watts, the 12 volt rail, rail will happily supply those few watts. So I really recommend you go for the single 12 volt rail, especially if you're running a good graphics card. Um, it's almost necessary nowadays if you're running a good graphics card because um, as the as they've got um, Nvidia, especially has got GPU boost, it's going to be drawing more power as long as the temperature is okay. Um, so 12 volt rail is really almost a requirement nowadays if you're running a high-end graphics card to be honest. Um, and yeah, that's that's my video on power supplies. Thanks for listening, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment with anything else you'd like to know. I'm happy to do more videos. Uh, my channel currently contains a video on AMD versus Nvidia and Intel versus AMD for building a new gaming PC or any other kind of PC. Um, please give them a watch and yeah, thanks for watching.